Crafty Gemini and this is video number seven, the last and final video in my Westchester Dolman Top video sew along. In this video, I'm going to show you and share with you my tips and techniques on how to attach a nice uh, neckband like this to your top, okay? A quick disclaimer. It's probably not going to be as easy for you as I make it seem in the video, and that just comes with time, experience, and a lot of trial and error. I've made hundreds of neckbands like this on tops over the years. So just know that if it doesn't turn out perfectly the first or second time, don't give up. It really is something that just comes to you with time. What I did in the video was that I didn't fast forward all the parts of where I'm sewing it on because I did want you to see in real time how I'm holding and manipulating the fabric to get it to go all the way around. So hopefully my tips and tricks will help you here. I share with you the formula of how I determine the size to cut your neckband down to. And there's overall a bunch of tips that I think are going to be really helpful for you if you're getting into sewing your own stretch knit garments. So let's get right into it. Now we're moving on to the neckband, and this is the last thing that we need to apply to our top to have it completely finished. So the handiest tool that I could recommend to you is my Curve Runner. We carry these in the online shop, and this is basically a clear acrylic circular ruler. Comes in super handy, especially for measuring around rounded areas, like arm's eye when you get to uh, settings in sleeves in your projects, but especially for all the neckbands. I use this every single time I make a top out of stretch knits, and you can use it for a bunch of other things, but I'm gonna show you here how I use it to measure the neckline so that we cut out the piece of fabric that we need to complete the neckband exactly right, okay? So we have pressed everything here, so my shoulder seam is right at the top, so I have a nice, even exact place that I'm gonna be measuring from. The key thing with this tool is to measure at the seam allowance, and I'll tell you why. If you were to measure on the inside edge, okay, looking just at the cut fabric here, that is gonna be a smaller circumference than if you measured out here, say an inch away from the cut edge. Do you see why? Because it's smaller versus being bigger this way. So you're aiming to get the most accurate measurement that you can get, so you end up with a nice neck band. So the way that this circular uh, tool works, this is a 12 inch one. So at the 12 inch mark, there's also a zero. You wanna set the zero at one of the shoulder points here. I'm placing it half of an inch away from the cut edge. Why? Because that's my seam allowance. So that's where I'm going to be sewing the strip of fabric. So don't come here. You want to be at a half of an inch, which you'll notice if you did your stay stitching in this area about a quarter of an inch away from the cut edge, you should not even be near your stay stitching line either because you want that to get caught up in the seam allowance. You don't want that to show once you've applied the finished neckband. So my zero's at the shoulder seam, half of an inch down. Now if you have a tough time eyeballing what half of an inch or whatever your seam allowance is for the project that you're making, I would suggest taking a small ruler and just marking with a chalk, tailor's chalk or some type of fabric safe marker where the half of an inch is so you'll get a better and more accurate measurement when you go to apply and measure with the curve runner. So I'm placing it here and then I just rotate it. And all I'm doing is going at half of an inch away from the cut edge, rotating my curve runner. And because the wheel is clear, as I bring it around, like right here, I can still see through the clear acrylic to see the distance that I am away from the cut edge. So it's very handy for this purpose. So I'm still maintaining my half of an inch, half of an inch, and I get to the other side. So now I look to see what measurement I'm at, and it's about four and a half. So what that tells me is I did a full rotation, so a full 12 inches, and then it's 12 plus whatever you started to rotate again after. So if you notice, the 12 was here. So from that shoulder seam to here was one full rotation of the curve runner. So here's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 and a half. And I'll write that down, that's for the front, all right? So we're measuring that circumference of this curve here, it's almost a circle. 16 and a half, we'll jot that down. All right, so I wrote down 16 and a half for the front. Now we'll do the same thing to measure the back. So we'll start again at the same shoulder seam, half of an inch in from the cut edge. And I end right around 10. So the back is 10 inches. We're gonna add these up and we get 26.5. So this is the full measurement. 
Now, because our fabric that we're using for the band stretches, all right, we don't want to cut our fabric, or excuse me, our strip of fabric to this length. We want it to be a little bit smaller so that it can kind of cinch in the neckband and have it lie nice and flat around our neckline. So to 26.5, you basically want to use up, and you can use anywhere from 80% to 90%. This will vary some depending on how much stretch content your specific fabric has, the fabric that you're using for the, for the neckband part. So what I like to do, a good rule of thumb, is to go with 85%. So to find out what 85% of the total measurement of the neck circumference is, we're going to multiply this 26.5 by 0.85. And when you do that, you're going to end up with about 22 and a half, a little bit more, a little bit less. At this point, the decimals, they don't matter too, too much. You can round to the nearest eighth or quarter inch because again, the fabric stretches, but we do want to go with a number that's smaller. So 26.5 times 0.85, which is 85%, is going to give us about 22.5 and some change, okay? So 22.5 inches. So that is the size that I wanted to finish in here done. However, this is just one strip right now. We need to stitch it together, the short ends of it, the same way that we did the sleeve band. Remember that we created a round circle out of the fabric for the sleeve band? We're going to do the same thing for the neck band. So if we stitch these two ends together, we need to account for some seam allowance that's going to get eaten up here. So if your seam allowance, again, is half of an inch, half of an inch from this strip will be sewn up in the seam allowance and half of an inch here. Half an inch plus half an inch is one full inch. So we're going to add one. Now we're at 23.5 inches. And if you want, you can round up to the nearest half inch just to give you a little bit of extra kind of uh, reassurance and that way it won't require you to stretch the band so so much this is going to be the trickiest part for beginners is attaching the neck band so if you want to go up to 24 inches or even 24 and a half a little bit more so you don't have to stretch it quite as much it will work out better for you than if you went with a shorter le uh, length for your strip so let's say I do 24 that means I'm going to cut my strip of neck band fabric to 24 inches by the two inch width measurement. So let me trim that down now. So here's my strip, and this is what I told you to cut it about 45 inches in length or whatever you wanna cut it at. At this point, we measured the circumference, we've determined what we need, and now we're gonna cut it down to size. Easy way for me for 24 inches, because I have a 24 inch ruler here. So I'm just gonna line it up. And there's my 24 inch strip. Next, really simple, same thing you did to the sleeve band. Pretty sides touching, grab the two short ends. Grab your ballpoint pins. And I only need one because this is so small. Match up these raw edges here. And I'm going to sew it up using that same half of an inch seam allowance at the sewing machine. So first, let's press it just as it was sewn. Then we'll open it up and press it flat and open. And now we'll do the same thing as the sleeve band where you're going to fold it in half with wrong sides together to create the neck band that we're going to stitch on. So take your time, match up the edges, press, and definitely set it so you get a nice crisp and clean uh, crease right there with the clapper. So once the neckband is prepped, there is a seam here where you connected it to make it a one round piece. Some people will place this at the center back. Other people will place it off center. It's personal preference really. I'm gonna put it somewhere in the center back. If it's off a little, it's not the end of the world for me so I don't really care too much about that. I'm going to place this seam somewhere in the center back, okay? So that the raw edges 
of my neckband strip match up with the raw edge of the neckline circumference, the same way that you kind of attached the sleeve bands, okay? But before we start pinning in place, let's mark another center point on here. So if I have the seam here, I'm gonna fold it right on the seam, I know that the other halfway point is gonna be on the opposite end of that seam. So I just place it flat, no stretching, and I'm just gonna place a pin at the opposite edge to mark it. You can use Taylor's chalk or whatever else you want. For me, I only mark those two center points. Some people will go like this and quarter it, matching this one to your pin, and then they quarter it so they find the mark here and put another pin right here. So you put it, basically the one circle band, you break it up into four quarters, okay? I find that I don't really need to do that here. So we're gonna do the seam itself is gonna go pinned at the center back with raw edges touching, and I'm gonna pin it from the top side because I'm gonna stitch it from that side. And then this band is gonna go like this. The center one that I put here, I'm gonna line it up with the center front. You can fold your top in half and press it with the iron to find that center crease, or you can eyeball it because this stretches, so I find that it doesn't have to be super duper exact either. So I'm putting my finger so I can remove the pin. I'm gonna find the center front here, and I'm gonna reinsert that pin. Make sure you have no twists in your band. So to do that, you're basically applying this to the pretty side of the fabric the whole way through. And you can just put a couple pins here just to see. But I find that if you pin here, it oftentimes will end up switching up or changing on you when you get to the sewing machine because you'll have to stretch this into place. Now, because the back part of the neckline is pretty straight, really, it doesn't scoop and is not quite as round as the front, I find that I really don't stretch along the back too much. And so instead, you're gonna be stretching most of the band to make it curve around here, the center front. Here, 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 and come back around this side. So you can see that even with just a couple of pins in place, it almost fits perfectly. So with some minimal stretching right along here, it's gonna fit it nice, and it's going to also bring in the neckline with the neckband so it lies flat against my chest by cinching it in because of that stretch. All right, so let's head over to the sewing machine. We're still using same needle, same thread, same half inch seam allowance. So you all can see it better. Now you can drape it over your machine here or if you have a free arm that you can remove, you can do that also. So just, again, if it ends up, if it ends up being too small, remember what I taught you how to do before with the sleeve band, just stitch from the inside. For me, I'm gonna stitch from the outside. So I'm coming around here to the back side. And you can start wherever you feel most comfortable. I find that by starting in the back, I kind of warm myself up before I get to the front, which is the part that I want to be the most consistent, the most even seam allowance, and the nicest finish. I don't want it to look choppy or jagged because that's what's on the front of your chest, what most people are gonna look at when they see you wearing the top. All right, so I'm going to start a little bit off from that center back seam that we have marked here. Make sure that your raw edges are matching. And now I have the shirt itself on the bed of the machine. I'm, I like to stitch it this way so that I have access to the band because this is what I need to stretch. So if I stretch, I can just pull here without running the risk of stretching out the neckline of the shirt. Okay, so keep that in mind also. And I'm just slightly tugging. Remember, the back is not very curved, so you don't have to stretch very much. And again, this part is gonna take some trial and error and some getting used to if you've never done this before because you really have to kind of just have a feel for it and it's gonna vary with every fabric that you choose, both for the top and for the neckband because every fabric is gonna have slightly different amount of stretch. So when I pull, I only pull a little. I tend to be really rough with things, so I constantly have to remind myself to only use my fingertips. Otherwise, I will stretch it way too much and I'll end up with extra neckband when I work my way around to the other side. So, just a slight tug. Don't yank it too hard, just a slight tug. And only stretch the neckline, or the neck band. Okay, notice I'm not grabbing both layers. Just the neck band. Okay. 
and do a little at a time so you can make sure that you are not stitching in any puckers. Make sure the lower level of the fabric here is nice and flat. And now we're gonna start coming along the front side. So here's where I wanna tug. When I say tug around the front, you don't wanna to yank too hard. It's just a slight pull. Make sure there are no pleats or puckers on my fabric underneath. Make sure everything is flat. So this is my other pin. So now we're coming along or coming around to the center front and you can see that I've stretched my band nicely. So that's why this looks like this. So if the center front is off by a little, that's okay. I'm still going to continue tugging slightly on my fabric. When I get to this point, I kind of like to stop and check because I find that the halfway point will allow me to see, am I, am I having, you know, do I have too much extra band here or am I going to have enough that when I stretch it, it will work around. Just a slight tug on the band fabric. Okay, so I'm a little bit past center front and I can look and see this is how much I have of the shirt and this is how much band I have. I still have a little bit less band than I do fabric here so I know that if I stretch it, you see, then it's going to reach perfectly without buckling or puckering or anything like that. So stop and check yourself at about the halfway point and make sure that you have enough and that you've cut your band long enough to have enough that as you stretch it, you'll make your way around. Now we're coming along the back to finish up so I don't need to stretch much at all. I went over my first stitches by a little bit so I don't have to back stitch. And that is a nicely attached neckband there. There's no buckling, no puckering, nothing. And now let's head over to the ironing board so we can give it a good press. Now for the neckline, I will use my clapper, but I also like to use a tailor's hem. And you can find these at any of your fabric stores. What I do is slip it inside of the top and I always am going to press from the pretty side because this is how I'm going to be looking at it. I know kind of how sleek and how smooth I want it to look. So I'm going to work it from the front. I'm warming up my iron again with some steam. We'll press and steam it and then we'll hit it with the clapper and we'll work our way around the entire neckline doing the same thing. I'll put it on the white side, the cotton side so you can see it better. Look at that nice neckline. No buckling, no puckers, nothing. After we give it a press and set it with the clapper, it's going to be an even nicer finish. So you just set the clapper on it for a couple seconds. Look at that. Beautiful. And then I'll slide it. Do another chunk of that curve. And I'm keeping the same natural curve of the neckline. And notice how I'm pressing it. You want to press it so that the seam allowance is going down into the garment. All right, so look at that, how nice, okay? And the garment really is finished at this point. So you can see that just on a sewing machine, you can make knit garments with no serger, no cover stitch. Now there is one last step that's optional at this point, and that is to top stitch around the neckline. And the reason for it is one, for a decorative element, and two, to stitch down the seam allowance that's in here that we've pressed down towards the inside of the garment. If we come along here and top stitch, either with a cover stitch, with a twin needle, with one needle, whatever you want to do, you can be about an eighth or even a quarter inch away from the seam line of where the neckband was attached, and you'll go all the way around the entire neck circumference. That will keep the seam allowance down, so even after you wash it, this won't come up on you. So that is one option. Keep in mind that if you are going to do it, I would suggest a stitch that works for stretchy fabrics. Similar to what we did at the hemline, 
You can totally do the triple straight stitch in this area. Again, I would lengthen it just like I did for my hem so that the stitches aren't so tight and cinching in at the neckband area. You can also use a, a light zigzag, like a slight one, maybe 2.0 millimeter in width and in length would be fine to work here. But again, personal preference and depends on what types of stitches you're able to do with your sewing machine. So for me, I actually, with the double brush poly, I like to just leave it like that and not top stitch around the neckline. It also saves me an extra step and some more time. But if you press your tops, I know a lot of people don't like to iron. If you don't want to press your tops before you wear them or when they come out of the washer and dryer, then you may want to go ahead and top stitch around that area. Just make sure that you're staying a consistent seam allowance away from the seam line of where the neckband meets the fabric and that it's far enough in that it's going to catch the fabric on this side. All right? And that's it. Your Westchester Dolman top is done. And that is it for this video and for the overall Westchester Dolman Top video sew along. If you follow this video step by step, try your hand at a couple different neckbands on some sample garments. At the end of it all, once you get it down, you'll have a finished Westchester Dolman Top. I hope that you enjoyed this video sew along series and if you did, go ahead and leave me a comment below letting me know a little bit more about your experience following me in this video sew along. If you liked this video and you enjoyed learning about how to attach knit neckband onto a top, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up below, share it with your friends across the different social media sites, and if you like what you see, don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.